Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and this is video number nine of my t-shirt quilt vlog. A whole series from start to finish on this quilt and today is Friday and I get to actually do some quilting today. So I thought I'd bring you along and show you the process. So let me just show you. I just got back from Joann's and I purchased this lovely soft pink fabric. This fabric is uh, cotton and it was the 108 fabric meaning it's 108 inches wide and i bought four yards so that i would have plenty to quilt this quilt and have some left over so this is going to be the backing of my quilt i also picked up some batting and let me just show you i got the packaged batting 80 20. i absolutely love this batting it's going to give a nice loft and feel to this quilt and show some really great dimension for the quilting on this quilt, most of my t-shirt quilts, I do some sort of meandering quilting stitch. It's not any certain kind of fancy pattern, but it is a great utilitarian quilting stitch that blends in to your quilt without taking away from all of the different t-shirt logos and things that are going on with your quilt. She will be able to wash and dry her quilt in her machine if her machine is large enough. <laughs> I'm thinking I can wash this quilt because it's so large in my machine and then partially dry it but I already know the size of my dryer uh, is probably not large enough. There won't be as much movement in my dryer to really dry the center of her quilt so I'll partially dry it in the dryer and then bring it out and lay it over the frame and let it finish drying before I package this quilt up and send it to its forever home. So. Those are my plans for this quilt. And let me just show you. I have right here the thread that I am going to use on my knoll thing to quilt her quilt. And it is the AK trading thread that I've been talking about. This is an off-white color which will blend in great with the back because it's pink with a, a really light uh, off-white print. So it's just going to disappear into the back of her quilt. And there's so much going on with the front that this uh, thread will just blend right in and you won't even be able to see it. You'll just see texture and dimension. So those are my plans for this quilt. I thought I'd bring you along and uh, show you different parts of the quilting process. It's going to take me just a few minutes to get everything loaded onto the frame. And then I will bring you back as we begin quilting and I'll show you different parts of uh, the quilting process so it should be a fun video to watch if you have any questions you can jump down to the comment section below I'd love to try to help and if this is the first video you have uh, seen there's a whole uh, playlist of videos that you can watch that brings you up to where we are right now I'll put a link to this whole playlist in the description box below Okay, I'm going to turn on some music and get to work putting this on the frame, and then we'll meet back when I get ready to get started. We're going to start this quilt up at the very, very top raw edge. I'm going to run a basting stitch all the way from the left side of the quilt right along the very top edge over to the right side of the quilt. I like to use my hand to create a little bit of tension on the quilt and that keeps the presser foot from dragging over those seams of the t-shirt quilt. They tend to be a little bit thicker and will drag if you don't pay attention. So just working my way over to the right side and once I get to this corner I'm going to come down the right side of the quilt and base that into place as well. Once I'm done over here, I'm going to go all the way back to the left side and baste the left side and then we're going to start quilting this quilt and I'm going to bring you along for the first full pass so that you get a good idea of my meandering stitch. They're a lot of fun to quilt. They don't take a lot of concentration but you do have to pay attention because this quilt has pockets and I don't want to sew those pockets shut so uh, I usually like to turn on some music and just relax and have fun quilting. I 
I pin basted the quilt in place up at the very top to begin with. So I'm just going to remove those pins and make sure all the strings are cut. And then we can get started with the fun stuff. I'm going to get started right on the left side of the quilt and again we're just doing a loose meandering stitch it's not very very large and it's also not very very small so I would call this my medium meandering stitch it usually takes me about 10 minutes I'm gonna check my tension and make sure everything is looking good on the back side of the quilt usually takes me about 10 minutes to go through a pass if I'm just doing a medium size meandering stitch. If I'm doing a smaller tighter stitch then uh, of course it takes me a lot longer to do a full pass on my quilt. And of course if I was doing a larger meandering stitch I could breeze through this in about five minutes. <laughs> The long arm really does make quilting, uh, especially larger quilts, a lot easier. And the basting stitch that we did at the very beginning to get started is all of the basting that I have to do in order to quilt the quilt, which saves me so much time. You can see I'm going around the pocket. I'm quilting right over the pictures. I want the pictures to blend in just like they're a normal part of fabric. They'll just blend right into the background of this quilt and there will be picture surprises everywhere you look. And the only parts of this quilt that I'm not quilting is the pockets like I mentioned. When I get to the pockets I like to pull down the flap a little bit and quilt just inside that pocket and that just helps really secure that right in place and I'll quilt close up to the sides and bottom of the pocket as well. You can see I'm going over all of those uh, logos. The gray logo and that pink uh, square sort of towards the middle of the screen if you can see that. That is actually appliqued onto that t-shirt and the nolting just quilts right through that this uh, thread from AK Trading Company quilts right through it. I don't have any issues with my thread breaking or skipping any stitches, so I'm really pleased about that. And we are working our way back to the left side of this quilt. And I'll see if I can't bring you in a little bit closer. I'm going to show you how I advanced the quilt coming up next so you get an idea of how that works. And I'm finishing up this pass. Now that the quilting is done on that first pass, I'm going to go ahead and advance the quilt up onto this top bar. Nice and easy, we're just going to roll it right up and advance it to the next section that gets quilted. I've raised my top bar so that there's no tension on the batting or the quilt top and I can go through and make sure the batting is nice and flat and straight and also make sure my quilt top is staying nice and straight too. Just go through and sort everything out, make sure it's all nice and flat. I can lower that top bar back down. I'm gonna bring the long arm back to the right side of the quilt and base this into place. We'll then move back to the left side 
and baste that side as well and then get started quilting again. I usually leave my long arm over on the right side so I can just face this straight down but I thought that maybe it was in the way of the camera. <laughs> now I think I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can get a better look at the quilting. Here's a little bit closer view. I'm really hoping that when I move to my new space, I'll have uh, some better options of places to put the camera so that it's not in the way and I can really bring you in really, really close to see exactly what I'm doing. So you can see a little bit closer. I had a phone call, so I had to pause the camera. <laughs> And then we're just going to pick back up and finish quilting. I always feel like these parts I really should just have music playing, but so many people tell me not to put the music in the video, so I kind of run out of things to say. <laughs> I will tell you, if you ever get a chance to go to a quilt show and try out a long arm, I highly suggest you do it just to experience how fun they are. Now I'm going to move the camera and give you a little bit of a different view. Now that we've moved the camera, you can see a little bit different part of the quilt. I always like sitting in the evenings and watching people quilt their quilts. <laughs> it's one of my favorite pastime things to do. For some reason, I just think it's so relaxing just to sit and watch. I've had many people ask if I quilt over top of my logos. And you can see that I'm just going right over top of everything. And most of the time I have no issues. Every once in a while I'll get a shirt that has some kind of plasticky coating uh, logo that is a little bit sharp for the thread. But I hardly ever see those. But they are out there and they do cause issues with the thread. And, and even with the best thread that I've ever used, I still get thread breakage on those types of plastic sticky logos on the t-shirts. Quilting right over top of those pictures. Just blends them right in. At this point we've advanced the whole quilt up on the top bar and we just have this small little section at the bottom left to quilt. Just like I did at the very top before we started quilting, I'm going to run a basting stitch right along this bottom raw edge. Just make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to while I finish up the small portion and complete the quilting on this quilt. I would say all together I spent let's see three hours quilting this quilt and I did take a lunch break and I've had a phone call and uh, we have a contractor at the house today so I've spent some time talking to him but it was about three hours from start to finish that's pretty quick to quilt a quilt that is this size and you can see I had just a little bit of batting left over at the very bottom I think the package actually gave me about four extra inches of batting so it was about 124 inches altogether which is good because my quilt top was a, exactly 120 inches long. <laughs> I'm glad I did not have to patch any batting at the very bottom. We've worked our way back to the very left edge and that finishes up the quilting on this quilt.
So here we are at the end of my work day. I have to go pick up my kiddo. So tomorrow is Saturday and I'll be taking the quilt off the frame, making some binding and binding this quilt. We'll get it in the wash probably tomorrow evening, let it dry really, really well the rest of the weekend. And I'm hoping to send this quilt to its forever home the first part of next week. So I hope she really loves her quilt and all the work that went into it. I know the memories and the pictures and the shirts uh, really make this quilt really, really special. So I'm excited for her to get her quilt. Stay tuned. I think we have one more video to finish up this series. I'm kind of interested if you would like to see uh, me take this off the frame. To be really honest, I just cut it off the frame. This quilt is so nice and square that I'm not even going to have to use rulers to square up this quilt. I'm just cutting it right off the frame. So I think I'll bring you along for that. And then uh, the binding. I've been attaching my binding to the back side of the quilt. Uh, the last few quilts that I've made. So if you're interested in seeing how I do that, uh, leave a comment down below and uh, maybe I'll film that part tomorrow as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic evening. Bye everybody.